Welcome to Electro Online, and here's our next example of how to draw or graph a rational function and how to find its domain and range. Here's the function. Notice in this case that the exponent in the numerator x squared is larger than the exponent in the denominator x to the first power, and that does change things a little bit. Where we do start out, of course, is again looking at the denominator and seeing what will make the denominator 0, and it's quite obvious when x equals 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, the denominator will be 0. So x equals 3 is the value that makes the denominator 0, so therefore that will be a vertical asymptote. So y-axis, here's our x-axis, so 1, 2, 3, x equals 3, that's where we find the vertical asymptote. And we already know that the graph will not cross that vertical asymptote. The next step is to look at the denominator and the numerator together to see if there's any other asymptotes, and there are or there is, at least is one, but the way to find that one is to divide the denominator into the numerator to see what we get. So let's do that. So we use long division, x plus, oh, it's not plus three, but x minus three. Divide it, divide it into uh, x squared minus four x minus five. So x goes into x squared x times. Let me redraw that here, that's a three. x times x is x squared and x times minus 3 is minus 3x. Subtract that from above. This minus that gives me 0. And this minus this, that becomes positive, would be minus x. We can now drop the minus 5. x goes into minus x minus 1 times. Minus 1 times x is a minus x. Minus 1 times minus 3 is a plus 3. When we subtract, so we get that would be 0. And minus 5 minus 3. And let's, let me see that again. Minus 1 times a minus 3 is a plus 3. When I subtract, that gives me a minus 8. So what that means, I can rewrite my function as follows. I can say that y is equal to x minus 1 with a remainder of minus 8 divided by the divisor x minus 3. So this is the new format of the function. It's exactly the same as that function right there. But now with this, we can actually find our second asymptote. What happens when x becomes very large in this case? Again, if we take the limit as x approaches infinity of the quantity x minus 1 minus 8 over x minus 3, notice that this then becomes infinity minus 1 minus 0. So this portion right here is negated, it goes to 0, because a divided by infinity is simply 0, and so we get infinity minus 1. Anything smaller than that, we can say that if x approaches infinity, if it's less than infinity, we get a very large number, a large number, minus 1, minus a very small number, and that very small number can still be negated. So basically, until x becomes really, really large, we can say that basically y will be equal to x minus 1 as x gets larger and larger and larger. This here will give us our next asymptote. Of course, we all know how to graph this. This is a, a, a straight line equation. y equals x minus 1. The minus 1, that's where the intercept is, which is right here at minus 1. The slope is 45 degrees, so we can say that here is our next asymptote. Notice in this case our asymptote is not horizontal or vertical, it's at a 45 degree angle determined by this concept. So now I still have two regions. I have a region to the left of the vertical asymptote and to the right of the vertical asymptote. So let's try some test points to see what our graph potentially could look like. I'm going to try x equals 0 on the left side and x equals 4 on the right side. So when I plug that into my original equation, I can say y when x is equal to 0 is equal to, well, that would be minus 5 divided by minus 3, which is equal to 5 thirds. So when x equals 0, y is 5 thirds. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 thirds, of course, between 1 and 2. So when x equals 0, y would be right about there. So that's one of the points. How about on the right side of the vertical asymptote? Okay, let's try that one. So we have y when x equals 4 is equal to, that would be 4 squared minus 4 times 4 minus 5 divided by 4 minus 3. 
So that would be 16 minus 16, that's 0, minus 5. That would be minus 5 divided by 4 minus 3 is 1, so it would be minus 5. When x equals 4, y equals minus 5. So x equals 4 is right here. And y equals minus 5 would be down here somewhere. So that would be 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 5, which means that other point on the right side of the vertical asymptote would be right there. What does a graph look like? Well, most likely, I know that I cannot cross this asymptote right here, so when it becomes smaller and smaller, I probably approach this asymptote. When I come up here and x becomes larger and larger, we'll approach this slanted asymptote. So it, if we continue this a little bit further, we can probably see better what it looks like. And on the right side, my graph probably will look like this, going to that point right there. On the left side, you can see again, as I go up, we'll approach the vertical asymptote. When we come down here, it becomes a large negative number. We'll approach the asymptote over here. So this function will look like this on this side and come down and approach that asymptote like this on this side. So that's what that function should look like. If you're not sure, you can try a few more points. You can let's say x equals 5, x equals 6, x equals 7. Here you can let x equals 1, 2, and so forth to make sure that yes, that indeed is indeed to graph. Assuming that's correct, I believe it is, let's find the domain and the range. So the domain is equal to all x's such that, and notice in the x direction, there's only one limiting value, x cannot equal 3. That means that x can go all the way to negative infinity, all the way to positive infinity. That means that x is limited by going from minus infinity all the way to 3. Uh, and, of course, it's a union all the way from uh, 3 all the way to positive infinity. And so that's one way to write it. The range, is the range limited at all? It doesn't look like it. You can see that it goes to positive infinity in one direction, negative infinity in the other direction, which means the the range is equal to all y's such that y is an element of the real number system. And that's how we do that in the case where the numerator has a larger exponent than the denominator.